Greetings and welcome to the Cataclysm. I'm your host, Vormithrax, and today I am here to show you how to survive the first few days of the Cataclysm. This is presuming an evac shelter start, so it's specifically a video demonstration of how you survive an evac shelter start initially, what resources you might have available in the shelter, and what items you can craft or build that will help you stay alive. So I'm going to walk through the tools you can craft, the furniture that might be useful, where and how to get all the raw materials and skills and so on. We're going to be doing it from a zeroed start, default character with no skills whatsoever, no items, none of that. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, survive the first day or two. So I hope you find the information helpful. Uh, this is using experimental build 11192. So as anybody that's played Cataclysm for any amount of time knows, the game progresses very rapidly, gets a lot of updates uh, on the experimental branch. So if you're watching this in the future, just be aware that some particular details might have changed, recipes might have adjusted, uh, resources might be different, things like that. But the basics of at least how you can find information um, and how to reconnoiter the, the evac shelter or whatever location you're in for materials will work. So hopefully it'll give you some ideas. But let's go ahead and start into a new game. So we're just going to go new game, custom character in the shelter world that I've got created. It's completely default world, no changes to the default settings, no mods or anything else added. And we're just going to tab our way right to the end, to the description screen. We'll just call this person Tester. And I'm not going to choose anything else. We're going to start with no skills of any kind. Obviously, you can shortcut your way to some of these recipes and some of the things you might want to do by picking skills early game. Your choice, but I wanted to show how you could do it without any assumptions of any kind. No starting skill requirements, none of that stuff. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is on this final screen, you actually have an option to choose from different starting locations. These are based on the scenario you've chosen. And you'll see on this list of options down in the lower left that there's one that says press forward slash to select a specific starting location. So if I press forward slash, that's the screen we get. And the reason I bring this up is important to know if you weren't aware, you do have choices. Sometimes you'll want to pick a specific location if there's a big list available. And that can change quite a bit how your starting situation is. So you have some variety there. But in this particular case, I wanted to point out that this first option that is the default random location three variants, what the game does is it just picks one of these three other choices, gives you that option, then it rolls an additional set of dice to determine whether the starting shelter is going to be looted or not. And it's fairly high chance that the shelter you start in will be looted, meaning it's going to have broken equipment and furniture, missing the curtains and such from the windows, things like that. If you don't want that random chance, just directly pick one of these three styles. When you do this, you'll get that style with zero chance that the shelter will be looted. It will always be a new pristine shelter with all the random materials or all the materials that it's supposed to have. So if you want to have a chance for it to be looted and you don't care which kind you get, pick the first one or leave it on the first one. If you don't want to loot it, pick directly from this list. So I'm going to go ahead and pick shelter central pillar for this demonstration. Then we're going to go ahead and jump right into the game. So yes and yes. And here we go. We are in the game world. Let's check our map first thing. So there we are. We've got the evac shelter kind of tucked up out of the way in the forest there. Uh, we're not going to be leaving the area of the shelter other than just briefly to go out into this forest section for a very short period of time. But uh, this will do. This is a good spot for us to demonstrate. So we've got things we need to do. If you're going to survive in the Cataclysm, you need to keep in mind on tools, food and water, shelter, things like that. Very important to get a handle on those early game. And I'm going to show you the steps you can go through and the particular items that you might find valuable uh, very quickly with the evac shelter start. So in this circumstance, I don't particularly care about blocking windows or keeping light out or anything like that. But the first thing I'm going to do is step over this window and we are going to tear down the curtains. And I'm just going to kind of make a pile of items here, eh, sort of in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a stout branch and wield it. That's going to be our bashing tool initially. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to step on this pile and I'm going to butcher the long string. This does not require a cutting tool. So you can butcher a long string into short strings without any tools whatsoever. I guess you're just ripping them up. But now we have, instead of one long string, we have six short strings. And we have our big stick in our hand. 
Next, we're going to go locate some sh some lockers. I'm going to go ahead and open up or tear down a few more of these because we're going to need the materials. And we'll drag these down. I'm going to smash lockers. Now, what we're after here when we're smashing these lockers is a pipe. I need at least one. If I get one early, I might keep smashing until I get a second one. But we'll just wail away. We got lucky. We did get a pipe. It varies. You won't always get one, so you have to be a little cautious. What I'm hoping to find with the lockers we have available are two pipes. I can get along with one, but two pipes would make it a little quicker. And then also, later when we disassemble these, I need two full sheets of sheet metal. So we do have the first one there. Let's take a look outside real quick. We do have a rock. 14 to the north. All right, let's go get that rock real quick. We don't need to smash another locker as long as we have a rock. The reason I say that is we need either a second pipe or a rock because they provide the hammering quality right here. So we need a tool with hammering and it can't be the same tool we're using as a raw material for what we're going to build. So we've got a rock for the hammering quality. We've got a pipe. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the crafting menu and we're going to make a crowbar. Makeshift crowbar. This is the first tool that we need. So we're going to go ahead and say yes to that. It has the hammering quality and it requires one pipe, which we just found. So we'll say yes. I'm going to say put it down and start working. And there we have our crowbar. We'll pick that up and drop the branch. And let's go ahead and move all this stuff over to our general pile of materials. So now we have a crowbar. We're going to go next up onto the roof. So we need to find the door that has access to the stairs or the, the ladder to the roof. Take that door down by smashing it apart. Pop up onto the roof and we're going to smash the solar panel. When you smash it, you should always get three chunks of steel. I've never seen this vary. I've done this dozens of times and it always has had at least three chunks of steel. Some of the rest of the materials may vary, uh, but I've never not gotten at least three chunks of steel. We'll also grab some scrap metal while we're up here. And if you didn't know, you can smash the rain gutter running along the outside edge for more scrap metal. So we'll grab some of that as well while we're here. All right. Let's go ahead and head back downstairs. Now that we have our chunks of steel, we're going to need a couple of those for a few purposes. So we'll just drop them in the pile here with everything else. Apparently I picked up some willow bark while I was away. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to mention. I forgot, in this particular start with the uh, default evac UE, we start with a pocket knife and a matchbook. Let's go get rid of those. I don't want to use those crutches. We're going to assume that you are playing without those as a starting option. There are other scenario starts that you can choose that have an evac shelter start, but don't have the same items. So I want to demonstrate that you can actually get along without starting with the matchbook and the knife. There are ways to craft or to build what we're going to need. All right, so we've got uh, the parts here for the next thing we need. We're going to make a cutting tool. So what we need for that is a spike, which we needed that chunk of steel from the solar panel for. So we're going to go ahead and craft the spike. Then we're going to craft the knife. This will be the makeshift knife right there. Makeshift knife needs a spike and needs two short strings, which we got by taking apart that long string from the window. And of course, a tool with hammering, which we're using that rock currently. So we now have our knife. Now we're gonna move on. Actually, let's, uh, let's smash a couple of these real quick, just to have some more planks and other parts. And we're gonna make a hammer next, makeshift hammer. So we just grabbed some planks. We've still got that extra chunk of steel. We've got two left. We're gonna use one for this recipe and then two more of those short strings that we per or we, uh, we crafted. And let's go ahead and use a stout branch. That's fine. All right, so now we have our hammer. We have our knife. Parts we don't need in one spot. And let's go for the screwdriver next. So we've got everything we need now. We built our makeshift hammer. We needed that in order to get hammering of two. The rock would not be able to do it because it only has a hammering of one. So you need to make the hammer before you make the screwdriver. But again, this time we just needed scrap metal, which we grabbed a bunch of up on the roof. And then stout branch or a plank. So we'll pick that and plank's fine. Okay, now we have our screwdriver. So we've got many of the initial tools. We've got the crowbar, we've got the knife, we've got the hammer, and we've got the screwdriver. So next thing we need is to get some of these lockers 
disassembled this time. We're not going to smash them. It's important to understand the distinction. If you smash, you get different materials than if you disassemble sometimes. So this time I want a different material. I don't necessarily need pipes. I need sheet metal and I have a better chance of getting that if I disassemble. So we got a sheet metal and we got five pipes out of that. All I need is the sheet metal for now. We're going to take another one apart right next to me and again, grab the sheet metal. And we'll grab some pipes as well while we're here. Eh, or we won't. <laughs> uh, that's fine. All right, let's dump some of those. So what we're going to make now is the brazier. So the brazier requires fab one, which you should have by this point with the other things that we've manufactured and we do. Needs the hammering of two, which is the makeshift hammer we crafted, and then one sheet metal. So we'll go ahead and get that crafted. Ignore the spider. <laughs> and now we have a brazier. A brazier is important because it is a safe way to contain fire. So if you're not already aware of that, it's an important early game tool. You need a way to preserve or to use fire safely without burning the building down. Brazier is the way you can do that. I'm not going to go into the whole how that works and so on. That's kind of different videos. But uh, brazier is a very, very important tool. You do want to make sure you source as early as possible. So we've got a safe fire containing ability now. So the brazier is complete. Next up, we're going to go visit the roof again. So and we're going to go to this tank. This is called a standing tank, which if I point at it in the upper right, you can see in blue, it says standing tank. Important thing to know about these is that they contain four 60 liter tanks. So we're going to use the tools that we crafted earlier the prying and the screwdriving tool, so our crowbar and our screwdriver, to disassemble this. So we're going to deconstruct the tank. And you'll see here, it now has a water faucet and four 60-liter tanks. We're going to move those four 60-liter tanks. Oops. Here you. Back that way. All right. I'm going to haul these using the haul items command because... We can't carry all four at once. We're just going to haul them downstairs and we'll scoop up these other items while we're hauling back to the uh, main pile that we're creating here. And I'm going to drop the crowbar. I'm going to pick up one of these 60 liter tanks in my arms and we're going to go find some water. And lucky for us, we actually started with some right outside the shelter. Pour into the container metal tank. We'll drop it on the ground because it's very heavy now. Now that we've added a full load of water in it, it's got 240 units of water now. We'll bring that down and don't care about the spider. <laughs> we'll just leave that right there for now. So you can see here, water, metal tank, and 240 units of water. So we do need to clean that. That's what the brazier is for. We can uh, boil the water. Um, to do that, we need one other tool. So we're going to go ahead and make a pot now. Earlier, I mentioned we needed two sheet metal. That's why we needed a second sheet metal for the makeshift pot. That's going to give us the boiling quality, containing quality, and food cooking quality. So this will give us everything we need to cook initial food, recipes, boil water to make it safe to drink, and to clean water, and so on. Giant web spiders trying to come get us. <laughs> okay, so we have crafted our pot successfully. Uh, yes, we're wielding our makeshift pot even though we can't see it. So there it is. We don't need to hold on to that. Okay, so we have uh, safe fire containment. I could put wood in there and light a fire if I had the ability to actually light a fire. I mentioned earlier that I dropped the matches. So that's the next thing that we need to take care of. Uh, we need some way of generating fire. So it's very important to have that, preferably before the sun goes down the first evening. That way, if you don't, you don't get too cold, you can uh, start a fire, you can cook, you can boil your water, things like that. Uh, we do have a, a spider. Uh, the NPC will likely deal with that. We're going to go about our business, though. So here's what we need to do next. We need a couple of skill levels in survival skill. Currently, we have zero survival skill right here. Well, we got 32% progress. The reason for that is because I have turned on this option here for auto features I turned it on true, and then I set auto foraging to everything, meaning I'm going to forage bushes and trees while we walk along the forest automatically. I don't have to press buttons. I don't have to do anything else. This does it for me. It still takes time. It doesn't save anything except for key presses on the keyboard, but this will speed things up. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to avoid that spider. We're going to go out the far side. And all I have to do is walk near trees and bushes. So that bush, you'll notice, just changed color because we just searched it. That bush changed color. Those two changed color. We're also peeling bark like that. Peeling bark off of trees, willow trees, and so on. It should only take a very short stroll through the forest, and you want to look for these kinds of bushes mainly, and then trees. Pine trees are also good. You know, however, pine cones and such. And then just every once in a while, come back and check your progress. We're still at 77%, so we need to spend just a little more time out here. No, we don't want to step on that. Here's some more bushes up here. It's easier for my brain to see uh, certain of the bushes. And we are at survival one. That's all we need for now. So let's go ahead and head back in. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want it to be passing time picking things up now that I've gotten the skill level I needed. You can get useful items that way for uh, food and uh, general utility, but I'm not concerned about that for the moment. For this demonstration, now that we have survival level one, we have an additional thing we can do. We're going to craft... And I'm going to use the search feature to go Q colon and uh, no, not quality. Sorry. I want P colon survival. So what that does is that shows me all the recipes that use the survival skill. And I'm looking for something we can make that's going to help us level up. Digging stick is a good one. We'll just go ahead and do a digging stick. It takes one hour to complete and um, it's the level that we are currently. And it will help us go to level two fairly quickly. Might do it in one, might take two digging sticks. We'll find out. So we'll pick digging stick and we'll just use a stout branch. We'll ignore the spider some more. Time will pass and we have our digging stick. What is our skill level? We are now at uh, survival one and 54%. So one more, hopefully will get us there. So we'll repeat the recipe. Did we make it? We did make it. We are at survival two now. That's all there is to it. We'll go ahead and ditch our digging stick and haul the other one onto our general resources pile. Now that we're at survival two, we're going to go ahead and create a fire drill. You can do either or, campfire drill or fire drill. Uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, 50, 500, a uh, rock. Oh, that's why I've got it for this one. So a rock, ceramic shard, you can also get down in the basement, which I'm gonna show you in a second. And it's gonna take a couple long strings. So you might need to take down some more of the uh, the curtains in order to get the long strings. But I'm going to go with just the standard fire drill. Uses less materials and it will work for me for plenty long. All right, so we have our fire drill now uh, right there in our hands. We also picked up this bark <laughs> while we were out and about. Let's ditch those. Okay, and let's go ahead and set up a firewood source there. Then I'm going to say from where I'm at, all right, from where I'm at to that firewood spot. Sort by category, please. Go ahead and move these planks over. And I put them in the wrong spot, because of course I did. Do, do, do. Let's try this again. There we go. Now we got the firewood in the right spot. So with the uh, fire drill in my inventory, it doesn't have to be in my hands. It just has to be in my inventory. It can't be laying on the ground. We can just examine the brazier, say start a fire, and there you go. We have uh, the ability to make fire, and we can contain it safely in the brazier. It will occasionally put out a puff of smoke, which isn't really a big deal, um, unless you've got some pretty serious problems going on already. So that gets us the, uh, the light. We've got the fire drill from our survival skill. Next thing I want to show you is down in the basement. We're going to go ahead and get our crowbar. And go ahead and drop the fire drill. Let's go uh, turn this off first. Down into the basements. All right. So this is a new addition to the game. So people playing earlier versions of, than the experimental I'm currently on will not see this option. But if you smash toilets and maybe disassemble, I have, actually haven't tried disassembling a toilet with this. But you notice that item that's listed on top, that is a, a wax, a piece of wax. We're going to go ahead and grab that large chunk of beeswax. Go up to the other toilet. Smash those. And no, I don't care about the water that's in the toilets. We have infinite water from that little pool, so trying to grab this water is pretty irrelevant. 
All right, we've got four pieces of wax. Let's also go grab another one of these. Drag it up with us. All right, and we're going to butcher another long string. We're going to start the fire back up again. Oops, I need my fire drill in my inventory to do that. There we go. And we're going to craft candles. Batch craft four candles. All right, there we go. We now have four candles. These are great early game light sources. You just light them up and they light the space that you're in. You can read, you can craft. It's nice, bright light. Doesn't cause any slowdowns, anything like that. So smash up some toilets, grab the wax, and you can be making candles. And they actually last a very long time. So you'll be surprised how long they last if you've never used the candles before. You can also find candles in kitchen cabinets when you're going to loot houses. So if you happen to see candles, I very much recommend you grab those if you're still in the early game and you don't have easier light sources already sourced. It's cumbersome to keep fire going in a brazier it both heats the area up which you might have a problem with depending on the season plus it burns valuable resources these planks um, and it puts out the occasional puff of smoke there are other things you can make that don't do that but not this early in the game not for our purposes for this demonstration all right so we've got now light sources we've got fire we've got water we've got a pot that we can boil the water in we've got extra 60 liter tanks that we can dump the clean water into so we can hydrate ourselves whenever we need to um let's talk next about weapons so early game weapons i recommend one would be the cudgel cudgel is an awesome early game blunt weapon like a fancy club it's got a lot of good techniques when you wield it it's a quick weapon um, just all around a very good, very, very cheap and easy weapon to make. So we'll make a couple, cudgel for us first out of a plank. There's that puff of smoke I talked about. <laughs> now we're coughing heavily because it got into our lungs. Let's wait till we get our breath back. So we have a cudgel now. So we'll go ahead and grab that up instead of the crowbar. Another thing, now that we've managed to get to survival two, you can do a wooden spear. So the wooden spear takes a bit of time and it does take some items. Long stout branch, which we can get outside. It's going to take leather or a rag, which we can get. And it's going to take some thread or some fiber. I'm not going to make this one in this demonstration, but I just wanted to bring it up. It is a reach attack weapon that you can use to hit zombies when they're two spaces away. So you can stab them back up, stab them back up, stab them back up. I recommend this over the knife spear that you might have gotten information on previously. The knife spears are pretty flimsy. They break very quickly. This is the earliest thing you can get to that's a decent reach attack weapon that you can get to simply just by following the steps that I just mentioned. So you can get a rag by disassembling or butchering the, um, uh, the sheets and such that we are doing earlier. Same with thread. You can get thread by taking apart the strings. So as an example, we can just butcher uh, a short string. That gets you 50 thread. And we'll butcher one hour to butcher a sheet, huh? Um, we're just going to cut up a sheet. And we got 19 rags by doing that. So spear... What are we? Oh, we're still missing the long stout branch. All right, let's take uh, our cudgel. We'll just pop outside. You get long stout branches from young trees. That's these things in this graphics pack. So that's a young tree. So we're just going to smash it with our cudgel till it breaks. And we didn't get one that time. Didn't get one that time. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Come on, young trees. There we go. There's our three long stout branches. We'll go ahead and drag all three of them back with us. All right, now we can do the spear again. Wooden spear. Put it down and start working. <laughs> now we actually hurt ourselves. We uh, hurt our torso slightly from the smoke. You can stand away. You don't have to stand adjacent to the fire, by the way. You can stand further away uh, as long as you don't need the light from the fire. So no need for me to stand right next to it and get the smoke inhalation. Uh, but we have a wooden spear now, so there we go. So now we have a reach attack weapon that we can use and we have the cudgel for the up close and personal work. So we're at uh, 630 in the afternoon, uh, early evening. And the other thing I'll point out now in experimental, we have this weariness system. We're moderately weary. So things we're trying to do, we're going to start slowing down. The last couple things that I'd like to try to point out or demonstrate are sleeping. 
Um, a couple things you can do in addition that we haven't done yet that I don't think I'm actually going to build here. But um, if you go to the construction menu, one other thing you might want to put together is a table. You can see you need fabrication one, a hammering tool, a wood sawing tool, which I'll show you in a moment, planks, and then a large wooden sheet or wooden panel. Now, if we go down to, let's see. Let's do the tool first. So if you need wood sawing, you can make an adds, stone adds. It takes survival two, which we've already acquired through the other means that I showed you, fab two, which we've already got, and then we can craft that. It takes an hour. Yeah, go ahead. We're going to be running out of some daylight here pretty soon. And we're going to get pretty tired. <laughs> but there we have a stone adds. So now we've added another tool, the wood sawing ability. And with that, we can uh, go ahead and make a few things. I'm going to, for demonstration purposes, take out this door as well. So we're going to use the deconstruct furniture. That is a way to get the wooden panel that we need for the recipe. So we'll just grab... The Grab that, drag it down to our pile of stuff. And now we can do a table. The reason you would make a table is because sometimes you need it, depending on what traits you've taken. Uh, if you have to eat a meal at a table, for example, there's a trait for that. Um, but you also get a crafting benefit. So it's faster to craft at a table surface than it is to just craft on the ground or in your hands. And it also removes one of the extra menu choices you have to make every time you craft something. It'll automatically assume the table is where you want to do it, and it'll craft it faster at that location. So we'll go ahead and say build table, and yeah, right there is fine, I guess. There's our table. So we've got that complete. Now we've got a crafting surface. We could grab it and drag it around, move it wherever we want to. You can see the sun is going down. We are very weary now, so anything we try to do from here is going to take even longer period of time. But the last thing I really wanted to mention in this particular tip video is uh, a place to sleep. It's not hard to do. Basically, just like the table that we looked at, you just want to bring up the list, type in bed, and you can see makeshift bed. All we need is a few more planks. If I just smash up a few of these uh, benches next to me, so we get a few more planks. There's one, there's two, three, there's four. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the fire going again. Uh, I've got nothing in my, my firewood source, so we need to fix that. So let's go ahead and do this and that. Move, move, move. All right, now we've got planks and we've got stuff for the firewood. So we're at our fire. Build, makeshift bed, right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we have a bed. It's not a good place for the bed, but this is just a demonstration. Obviously, you want to position it wherever it's best for you. Uh, a lot of times I would recommend actually building these things down in the basement. So there are tactical reasons for that. Um, or you can build them up here, your choice. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate what could be done in an evac shelter start very quickly. So we're not even to the end of the first day yet. We've only been in game for 14 hours. We started at 8 a.m., so 14 hours. We've achieved all of the basic tools. We've got the, the knife, the crowbar, the hammer, the screwdriver. We have a way of making fire whenever and wherever we want. Uh, we've secured our water source. We can boil up clean water anytime that we desire. Uh, we haven't gotten anything for food. That's a different topic, different conversation. And the evac shelters usually start with a bunch of protein rations uh, in the various shelter cabinets and um, lockers. But those are obvious. You'll find those yourself as you go through things. So I think that's it. We've got weapons. We've got water. We've got fire. We've got all the basic tools. Uh, we've got a bed to sleep on. Oh, the last thing I wanted to mention. Temperature is a very important thing to deal with, and the bed is nice, but you want to have a blanket for the bed, ideally. You may not get all this done as fast as I have or before the night goes by, and we're also very weary. But the last thing that I would recommend that you want to pay attention to is also getting a blanket put together. Wrong menu, Varmithrax. Blanket. So you can see here, blanket, tailoring zero, you need a sewing tool, and you need some more rags. So we'll go ahead and just do a needle, which you should have the information or the skills for already. Wooden needle. That satisfies the tool requirement. 
And then we need to get some more rags. We're just going to cut up a bunch of sheets for now. I'll leave it to you to figure out what the most efficient way to do things is. Blanket. There we go. We've got the thing we need for the blanket. Hour and 20 modified by whatever it's going to modify by. And we might inhale some more smoke while we do this. <laughs> You're tiring out. Continue working. <laughs> Okay, there is uh, the blankets uh, on the ground, I'm hoping. Yes, there it is, blankets. Where are the blankets? Blankets on the bed. All right, and there we go. We now have a place that we can sleep safely. By safely, what I mean is the blanket auto-regulates your temperature. If you're ever in doubt of uh, cold damage that you might take while you're sleeping, if these temperatures are any numbers in... Uh, below 30, minus 30, then you have a potential chance for actually damaging yourself while you sleep. Pay special attention if you have damaged limbs, because what is normal temperature while your limbs are at full strength might be a lot colder when they take damage. Damaged limbs are more susceptible to cold, so you got to check this before you go to sleep. But as long as you sleep on a surface with a blanket, the blanket will auto-regulate your heat or your, your temperature while you sleep, so you won't have to worry about taking cold damage while you sleep. So always try to make sure you can do that if possible. All right, there we go. It's 2.30 in the morning, and we have secured pretty much everything that uh, I would like to recommend. Um, the, the wax in the toilets is a pretty good one. Those candles are going to be very, very helpful for you. Uh, and that's a very non-obvious thing to know about, so I wanted to be sure to point that one out. But otherwise, we've pretty much secured everything we need for early game survival. We've got weapons, we've got all the basic tools, water, food is the only thing next, and uh, I'll let you figure that part out. So I hope you found this demonstration tutorial of the early game evac shelter start and what you can accomplish with the local materials helpful. As always, if you have any suggestions for future videos that might help folks out, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you have any other tips for an evac shelter start that are different from the ones I offered, feel free to post those as well. You can always visit me on my Discord channel if you have uh, thoughts, suggestions for future content. Other than that, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.